Well, let's get to our first topic of discussion today. I mean, uh, let's talk. Let's go to women first. Let's talk about women uh, today. The celebration is still on. So uh, let's tell you that in December last year, the United Nations uh, selected the team Digital Innovation and Technology for Gender Equality for the 2023 International Women's Cele Day celebration. The theme is in line with the focus of the 67th session of the Commission on the Status of Women Innovation and Technological Change and Education in Digital Age for Achieving Gender Equality and Empowerment of Women and Girls. As the world marks International Women's Day, the theme digital all resonates with the enterprising and resilient spirit of Nigerian women who have against all odds continued to play a critical a significant role in evolution of overall development of the country's economy. Joining me now via Zoom to uh, give us our light of the role of women in business and, of course, economic development. She is the Vice President, Membership at the Professional Women Network, Lagos, Dr. Titilayo Fowoko. Dr. Fowoko, thank you so much. It is good to have you on the show and happy International Women's Day to you. Thank you, Thulu. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here on the show with you again. Thank you for celebrating the women. Yes, so I have, I, have, I have no choice. I must do that. But let's start with the theme for this year. Uh, sounds interesting. Digital innovation, technology for gender equality. I don't know. I think that is where we should start from. What do you make of this? Why this theme at this time? Okay, um, thank you, Tolu. I, I know that we all uh, we are all aware of the fact that um, from 2020, our life has changed from the conventional way we do things to the way we are now. And that is with the coming of COVID-19 pandemic uh, that changed everything. So it made all of us to go digital, which um, we were running away from, but now we have no choice. So I, I think it's uh, not out of place to also look at um, how are women fearing in the digital space because we look at the the, the team is digital. You know, you, you're looking at it. It should be everybody, all inclusive. It shouldn't be only the men that will be doing making giant strides in the digital world, while the women will be staying behind. And I'm very very happy and I'm, I'm so so elated that we have women that are pulling strings in the digital space uh, at this time. We have the FinTech that's very active in this area, and we have women that have contributed one way or the other, uh, that have made it to be uh, no more a, a men affair, but a women affair. But I believe that um, it could be better. We are still not yet uh, there. Mm, interesting. It could get better. That, that, that's, the, that, that's the truth. But let's talk about challenges now. Many talk about challenges women face and it's important that we highlight some of these challenges. Like uh, talking about the digital space, some say online harassment, even for women. So what are some of these challenges and what do you think are the ways we could get, get through them? Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, before I go into challenges, I, I just want to say something that even the, 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 the theme of this year is not only looking at the digital space, it's looking at it from the point of view of equity. You know, we used to say equality, but now we are saying, no, equality, we are moving away from there. Let's not talk about equity, because if you say equality, you give all of us the same thing, but you know our the way we can handle it is, is not the same. So you need to also look at the equity side. So we are not only talking about digital, but we are also talking about equity when it comes to the use of technology. And then when you talk about challenges, in fact, there are numerous challenges that women are facing. And, and, and I won't lie to you, even when it came to this issue of... Um, um, I am digital um, lifestyle. There is still discrimination, um, but I know women. We are we are trying to pull the strings, but there is no way you would see. Before now, it's always been a men men, but now we have people that are technology savvy that are women, and they are already coming into the limelight and and making waves in that in that area. So we have things around um, education. Uh, this is also challenges because to be sincere with you. You would expect me at this age that I've never been a, a savvy, an IT savvy, to just start being um, going doing something novel in the IT world. So um, the women are still not yet there. There's still that uh, access to education to make them to be able to get that knowledge and skill. 
uh, quite a, number, a lot of times so women struggle through to get themselves to be educated, to be able to do some of these things. If you if you try to um, talk to a few of these women that are doing uh, great in the in the technology world, they will tell you a lot that they've done on their self um, self development. I, I happen to speak to someone; she's a savvy, and she said, "Look, I, I had to take a week leave because I needed to go some do some courses outside the country, and um, my employer is not allowing me. So the best I can do is to take my leave." And then go do that course so that I can be better in, in, in what I do. So these are some of the things that happens. They go a long way. And we have things around. They say the gender issue is still there. Um, even if you're good, you need to prove three times harder than a man needs to prove to show that you are good. So that gender um, difference is, there, is still there. So uh, apart from the challenges in the technology world, women face all the challenges that affects even their performance in these things. Uh, we know things around healthcare. Uh, you're a woman, you're a career woman, you're into technology, you have your children, so you are thinking about, oh, I need to get this um, th this thing up and running, this software up and running, and the children is there, the children's uh, um, care is also there, home care is there, and you're just managing in between. So there are a lot of things that affects women and that really makes them not to be at their best. I believe that we can be better than where we are now. We, in fact, there's that the opportunity is there. But the opportunity to develop ourselves and given the space, the chance, the support, the wings to fly uh, is, 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 a, is still a challenge. Mm, interesting stuff uh, there. But let's talk about the gaps in, let's stay with a little bit of, around education now. Let's stay there and talk about STEM the involvement of women in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. I know that will interest you. How well do you see women keyed into those areas that many say, well, it's like it's just for the men. How well are women taking advantage of, of all of this? That, those kind of um, space. <laughs> I think I would say that um, we are still exercising fear. Um, we we been able to raise women that are bold enough to give what it takes to compete in these areas, uh, but quite a lot of women that have those abilities still feel intimidated. Um, they, they look around and say, "Look, uh, I need time to be able to do this, and because of that, I cannot afford to leave um, this other aspect of my life: the family, the children, the the external family." And those things are still competing with women, taking advantage of the opportunities that are there. And one thing I always tell people is that you cannot give what you don't have. If the opportunity uh, for women to rise in those areas come, because you have not positioned yourself, you cannot fit it in. But women think about so many things. They don't think about themselves alone. I, I will tell you that before a woman thinks about herself, she would have thought about her children, thought about her husband, thought about her siblings, thought about her parents. Before she now starts saying, oh, myself. And mind you, you've put four people before you. So when even when the opportunity is there, I believe we can do it. I have that spirit of can do. And I always tell women that you can. If you desire to do, you can. So the opportunity is there. We can actually show who we are. But we still have this hindrances, these challenges. Let me not say hindrances. These challenges of being able to manage the competing demands of our social life of our family life and these opportunities of being uh, in the in the work world and in the economic world in the in the business world to be able to to prove that we also can be able to to show what we have and can compete favorably in the midst of um, these challenges. So we, we we have a lot that we are battling with. And I told you before, told you that women multitask. We have strength. We have those inner strengths that propels us. So it, the opportunity is there, but a lot of us are still not exploring it. But I guess it's changing, but it's, I believe it can always be better than where we are today. Mm. Making it better uh, is still staying with the role women play uh, in the world of business. Now, what is this special thing uh, that you believe that women have that you think make them uh, excel, or do well, or want to just stand out wherever they find themselves. What is this special thing? I believe you should be able to tell us, uh, you know, 
it, it mustn't really be a competition, but I believe that uh, what really is that thing that you think makes the female folk stand out uh, amongst the crowd? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I, I would I would like to say that I'm actually not talking about we want to do shoulder to shoulder, but I believe that there should be opportunity. Um, from from all indication, um, women owned businesses have proven to be growing faster, the fastest growing uh, globally. And why is this so? There's so just that their participation in entrepreneurship activities does not only support the family income. They also play a significant role in economic development, social well-being of the society. They don't just look at themselves. They look at everybody around us. It's a we thing that they do in their own way. So, you know, when women get this economic empowerment, it makes them to be able to influence more lives. I'm not saying men don't influence lives, so please don't take me wrong. But I'm saying that they are closer to other lives. Uh, they have more time. They, they desire to create that time so that they can influence more lives. Now, if you're talking about women's economic empowerment, we're talking about they've been able to participate equally in existing markets. You know, they have access to, they can control productive resources. They have access to decent work. They, they, they have increased voice. They can do meaningful participation in economic decision making at all levels from their household to their office, to even international uh, environment. So, so there's this innate ability, like, like I used to say, that women carry. Even when you ask them to organize things, the touches they put into it. And then let's look at the work, work, world of, of, of work. Um, gender difference is still there, even though um, employers are trying to be gender. They will tell you oh, some jobs women cannot do. Uh, but some men can do. And the question is asking yourself is, is it really, really that women cannot do it or but there's a perception that women cannot do it? So they've actually been doing well in, in those areas where they find themselves. And, and I think it's not different. So they are less likely to participate in labor markets than men around the world because of some of these um, restrictions that are put. And um, they are more in the informal sector. So if you look at it from that angle, if they can su survive, and be able to thrive in the informal sector. It means that if you give them more opportunity, they will do a lot. And I, and, and I bet it with you, if you remove the informal sector from what we have, then it means that um, we, we are not going to be able to make a, 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 lot, of, a lot of things. If you, if you look at it from the sustainable development angle also, um, we know a lot of things threats against women, but they are still resilient. That, that's one thing that, I, that makes me to feel we, we have the strength. They are still resilient. In the, look at COVID time, look at the insurgency, they are the most vulnerable, but they still, you see a woman that has been attacked and she's still thinking about my children, my husband, my family, before she even talks about, oh, let me go to safety. So they, 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 I just believe that women has the natural ability, apart from that, apart from that, they have the strength and, and suddenly they influence the society. These qualities are enough to get them that inclusiveness that is expected. For instance, in governance, where are we? We are far behind. We've seen the recent election. We've seen what has come up. How many women did we get, did get, got the certificate for the 10th legislative uh, house? Three or so, very small. But we need that platform to be able to, um, to showcase what we're able to do. When we talk about environmental challenges, it's the women that feel it more. They are the ones that are more in the house. And so I, I believe that women has a lot that they can deliver, that they can offer, if they are given the, the, the right platform to be able to do this. Mm. So let's now talk about, you, you've already mentioned politics and governance. How can we encourage more women? Or what needs to be done to make sure more women play actively in politics, in the governance, in leadership and all of that, what more do you think need, needs to be done? I know we have more than competent uh, women across the country. I know that. But how can we encourage most of them? Because many of them just tend to ignore it and say, hey, it's for the men. So how can we, you know, so what can we do to, to improve their participation? Okay, th thank you, Tolu, for that. Um, you see... 
let's also remember one thing and the and that one thing is that um when women try to put their voice there and they seem not to get that hearing those that are resilient would push and push and push now with what has happened some are discouraged but we need to consciously create that opportunity. I remember the, was it the, there was a time we had a bill from the women and it was shut down. Now, the way we perceive it, there are other countries where women are the, in the majority compared to Nigeria. We are even not even in the, minor, the very, very minute number. So I believe that first, we have to create that platform, encourage them. And when we create, we're talking about creating platform. That's as small as local government is. How many women do we have in local government? Because I don't believe that the election of local government can be that um, tedious like presidency or governorship. We're talking about local government. We, even for the House of Assembly, uh, the National Assembly, the Senate, uh, we know how it is, the, the struggle for survival that goes in. But we need to understand that there's what we call equity. And we don't just say they want to be equal. No, we are saying, look, Everyone needs to have the same resources and opportunities. That's when you talk of equality. When we come to equity, you have to recognize that each person has different circumstances. And you need to give the resources that is required. So you need to give resources required for our women to be able to get that encouragement to participate. Few are taking the bull by the own. Those who are resilient, those who want to give all it takes, to have a voice and to represent the women fold in governance. But if the platform is not created as low as the local government, then we are not giving them that hearing. You, you see, there must be that opportunity for them to show that they can actually do something. And until when the government consciously create that environment for them, we, we may not be able to get them. A few will still struggle through. A few will empower themselves. And if you will continue, but if we want full but full inclusiveness, then we need to create policies that will encourage women, even right for workplace. Some workplace will tell you, um, if I was at a forum and somebody was saying, Oh, we we they cannot do the job. And some women say, oh, sorry, some of us have been doing some similar jobs and we are getting it. So I think for politics, um, <laughs> women don't now have the muzzle for all this, but we should consider the fact that uh, the international women is talking about e embracing equity and giving us opportunity uh, to be able to showcase what we have. So the government should consciously consider this. And even when there are women that have volunteered to give what it takes to have the voice, to be the voice of women there, then we should not stifle them. We should give them that opportunity. We should not stifle them. And we should allow, let's even allow them to showcase what they can do. Let's see what women can do when it comes to governance. I have mentioned it before in some of one of the shows we've had, um, discussions we've had that women that are even in the boardroom, we can see the difference they are making in the organizations. And so if we can do it in the private businesses, we can do it in the business world, then what says that we can't also be given opportunity to, to, to try our hands in the, in the political scene? So I think the, the platform needs to be created and more women should, be, should come out. I want to tell my fellow women, if you have it in you, please push it out and let's give you the support. And I don't believe in women pulling women down. I believe in women supporting women. As long as we have a clean heart towards each other, we should be able to support each other. Women pull up women. That's what I believe in, but not pull down women. No, it's not the right thing. So women should encourage each other. Government should give us the platform. And then we will be ready to try because we are going to position ourselves to be able to show that um, we can start and give what we have in us. Thank you. All right, I must thank you so much, Dr. Titilai of Owoko, Vice President, Membership of the Professional Women Network. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate your brilliant contributions. Do enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, Tulu.